Hey guys, Happy New Year. This is my very first video for 2024 on this channel. And as you guys can see from the title, I am late to the party when it comes to this topic and discourse, but this is something that is really important to me, especially on this channel. If you guys seen my past videos, I've done unboxing videos of Blu-rays, I've done DVDs and Blu-ray collection videos, and this is my two cents about physical media, the importance of physical media. I know um, it will probably be the same regurgitating points that other people have made, but screw it, right? I'm just going to add my two cents on it. And that the idea of physical media being depleted and the fact that we're, we are losing our right and freedom of choice, options, to own you know, a form of art, which is movies, TV shows, and I'll probably address, you know, like music and video games and books, but for the most part, this video will be about DVDs and Blu-rays as um, physical media. And the thing is about me, call me old fashioned, I've been collecting DVDs and Blu-rays since the 2000s, right? And I am a first year Zoomer. I was born in 97. So technically I'm a first year Zoomer, but I love collecting movies and, you know, Blu-rays and DVDs, especially ones that are really important to me and that I know I'm going to watch for the rest of my life and share it with other people, you know? Like, I just don't like the, the idea of a bleak future where streaming services is the only option to have and there's no other options of owning, you know movies and TV shows through physical media, which is Blu-rays and DVDs. I don't have 4K. I haven't transitioned yet. I don't have a 4K Blu-ray player or TV, but I'm perfectly happy with Blu-rays and DVDs. And the thing about streaming services, I'm not going to act like I'm above streaming services because I've used them since the 2010s, okay? Back when it was just Netflix, Hulu, and Prime Video, which is like the big three, the trinity of uh, streaming services with a couple of outliers like Crunchyroll and Funimation when it comes to anime. And that's the thing about anime. Anime through physical media is pretty expensive. Unless you can find some deals for uh, physical media or Blu-rays and DVDs of anime. Uh, chances are, for the most part, they're pretty expensive. And I think uh, having streaming services like Crunchyroll and Funimation is the only acceptable um, way to watch anime if you don't have the extra funds to own physical uh, media, you know? And, but when it comes to like everything else, like streaming services, I just don't like the idea of the abundance and overwhelming streaming services that we got. Like I said, back then, especially the early 2010s, it was just uh, Netflix, Hulu, and Prime Video. And Prime Video, to be honest, I considered it as an add-on because we all subscribe. For the most part, I don't want to speak for everyone, but for me, I subscribe to Amazon Prime for the fast and free shipping. Not really Prime Video. Like I said, it's an add-on. But everything else, like Paramount+, Plus, Apple TV, uh, Peacock, HBO Max, or now it's called Max, but... And Disney+, Plus, it's just too much of that streaming services it's it almost becomes like paying for cable and the idea of streaming services is that it's supposed to be a good alternative to cable nobody really or I don't want to say nobody but most people don't have cable TV anymore because oh we can just stream TV shows and movies and if we want to get our breaking news about what's going on in the world we just go to YouTube or our favorite social media for that but when it comes to streaming services uh, the I can only think of three benefits for streaming services, okay? There's only three. First one, easy. It's the convenience factor of streaming services. And I get it. There's going to be some people who say, why should I own D a, a DVD and Blu-ray of a movie that I know I'm not going to watch over and over and whatever. And that makes sense, right? That's why it's recommended or encouraged for you to pick up your favorite movies and TV shows on DVD or Blu-ray that you know you're going to watch forever and streaming services might not have it, you know? They might not have 
the movie and TV show you're looking for, and it's one, and physical media is a good outlet for you to own and and keep, you know, for the rest of your life. So, but yeah, but like I said, the first benefit for streaming services is um, convenience. The second one would be. In st back in the day, especially the 2000s, you, we would go to our video store and buy or rent movies if we are on the fence of a specific movie. And back in the day, the only option we would have is to rent a movie, whether from your video store like Blockbuster or maybe Redbox and stuff like that. Netflix used to do that. You know, they used to send DVDs through the mail, you know, if you want to rent a movie. But... But now with streaming services, I think streaming services is a good place to watch a movie that you're on the fence about. For example, for me, uh, Shazam! Fury of the Gods, the second Shazam movie. I, I never went to see it in the theater because I'm not paying a $20 ticket for a movie that I am not sure if it's going to turn out to be good or bad. And then, I think a month later from its release in the theater, it was on streaming digitally for rent but it's like full price it's like 20 bucks and then over time they'll go down to like four bucks for rent but i decided to wait longer and it eventually arrived on max and because i'm paying 14.99 for max not for any specific movie it's for the streaming service with a library of movies so technically i'm not losing any money if i went if i went to see shazam and shazam ended up not being a good movie it's boring and it sucks but like I said that's the second benefit the third benefit for streaming services is I hear from other people that a lot of people are just lazy because people are lazy to go to their shelf take a DVD and open it but my counter argument to that is that streaming services provides a way for you know let's say for example, we all have our comfort show. We all have our uh, favorite TV show that we watch and once we're done with the show, we just go back to the beginning and watch it again because it's really difficult to try something new, take risks, or be out of our comfort zone. So for example, for me, uh, Justice League Unlimited is my comfort show, you know? I'm sure a lot of others, their comfort shows would be like Friends, The Office, That 70s Show you know, uh, Big Bang Theory. But for me, it was Justice League Unlimited, and I bought this DVD when it came out back in 06. So I was like nine years old when the show basically ended. And you guys can see the wear and tear on the case, and I'm surprised the discs still work. But I also double dipped into a different format and got the Blu-ray version right here. So, yeah, but... If you guys are wondering, oh, what's my third point of the benefit of streaming services? The thing about at least Justice League Unlimited here in the United States, we have Justice League Unlimited on uh, Max and Netflix. So it's not because I'm lazy and and refuse to like go to my shelf and take out and open a case of you know my physical medium, pop it into my Blu-ray. Sometimes I just want to preserve. Um, the life of the Blu-ray and the DVD because you know when you play your movies it will add wear and tear to your disc even if you're not you know fast forwarding the movie rewinding it skipping it whatever you're still gonna have or deal with scratches on your disc if you play you know the movie or the TV show as it is it might not happen quick but it will happen over time and the benefit of streaming services is that, oh, since it's on Netflix and Max, I can just watch it on there and, you know, prolong the lifespan of this DVD and Blu-ray. You know, so that's the third benefit. So the first one, convenience. The second one, you're, you're not really taking any risks about a certain movie you're on the fence on. And then the third one is prolonging the life of uh, the Blu-ray. Or, yeah, prolonging the life of your DVD and Blu-ray copy. And, and it's just sad to see the state of physical media just because 
when I go to the store, like Target, Walmart, Best Buy, the selection isn't that great. I think Walmart, out of all the stores, has the best collection. Or selection, my bad. It has the best selection of movies, at least in my area, you know. Every time I go to a Walmart, I always see Dragon Ball Z box sets and a bunch of variety of TV shows and movies. So I think Walmart is the best of the bunch. Target, not so much anymore. I remember when I was a kid going to Target, um, they used to have their dedicated section of movies and Blu-rays and it almost felt like a maze going in there. Almost felt like a little mini library section but full of DVDs and Blu-rays. We do not get that anymore. Best Buy. I stopped going to Best Buy because they don't really have anything worth getting, in my opinion, other than computer parts and stuff. But that's really it. <laughs> like, their selection of movies and uh, DVDs, or movies and TV shows at Best Buy is abysmal. I think the only time it's worth going to Best Buy is if they have like a cool exclusive steelbook, steelbook or whatever, but other than that, not really worth going there. And, you know, one of the things I miss from Walmart and Best Buy, they used to have the $5 DVD bins on, from both um, Walmart and Best Buy. I remember going to Best Buy and uh, seeing Speed Racer in the DVD bin, the $5 bin. Uh, Godzilla. Godzilla was also in the $5 bin at Walmart. Uh, and not only they had a DVD bin, at one point in the mid-2010s, uh, Walmart and Best Buy had a Blu-ray bin, which were 7 bucks. So, for example, this Daredevil Director's Cut. I got this at the Best Buy Blu-ray $7 bin. And this Batman is from the $7 bin, Blu-ray bin from Walmart. We used to have those. We don't have them anymore. And the selections have been decreasing over time. And I'm making a big deal about this. And the whole point of this video is that you should really... I, I encourage people or recommend people. I'm not going to tell you guys what to do. But I always recommend people to pick up uh, Blu-rays or DVDs of their choice. I say it's important to pick a movie of your choice because I've always hear people across the internet saying that they hate how their favorite movies and TV shows are scattered through different streaming services. Or sometimes maybe they have a favorite streaming service like Netflix but they never carry the movies that they wanted to see. And it's one of the reasons why if you're dealing with that issue it, it is recommended to buy your favorite TV show or movie that you know you're going to watch on repeat and keep for the rest of your life, you know, without corporations um, editing your movie, censoring your movie, taking it away from you, and stuff like that. And also, um, coming from me, you know, I get it. A lot of people don't like owning movies because maybe they don't have the space. Maybe they just don't care for movies and TV shows like that. Maybe they just care about TV shows and movies as like a thing to kill your time with. It's pretty much entertainment, right? It's just there to just kill your time and you don't really need to own it. And I get it. Some people are like that. Some people think streaming services is the future. That's fine. I, I, I feel like there is a purpose for streaming service in our society. I feel like there is a point for it, but it shouldn't be our only option. That's the that's the difference. I care about having options, you know? Because for me, and this is coming from a Zoomer, okay? Like, in the early 2000s, you know, I grew up with on the decline of VHSs. My very last movie that I got on VHS is uh, Spider-Man. Sam Raimi's first Spider-Man movie on VHS. That was the last movie I ever got on VHS. But when it comes to my last VHS in general, it's probably what you see down here, which is Spider-Man The Return of the Green Goblin, which is basically Spider-Man The Animated Series. It, it's kind of like these older, old-school DVDs where they only include, like, three episodes in there, and that's how they get you, you know, with um, your money. And I blame Disney to this day for not giving us uh, Spider-Man animated... A, a complete animated series of Spider-Man. I guess a 
complete release or a complete box set of Spider-Man the Animated Series because it was released around the world but not in the US from what I've seen and sure you could always go on Etsy and buy bootlegs and unofficial releases and I've seen people do it at, at this point and even me if you guys see my old Blu-ray and DVD collection videos I've had some bootlegs of Ed and Eddie like a Blu-ray of Ed and Eddie uh, a Blu-ray of X-Men the Animated Series, Spider-Man the Animated Series, X-Men Evolution, because these corporations refuse to get money from us. You know, it's like, it's as if they hate money. They are anti-consumer, and I prefer to own and keep the stuff that I like. And without corporations censoring it, ruining somebody's vision, or just taking it away from you, and becomes lost media over time. And that's not good. You know, and... Um, sure, we had a resurgence of some forms of physical media, like record vinyls. Those came back. That's cool. It would be nice if CDs came back, but, you know, it is what it is. We still have books. We still have physical books, even though we live in an age of technology of digital books, but we still have books. And other than that, yeah, and when it comes to video games... I can't really speak much on it because I'm a PC gamer and at this point when it comes to PC gaming uh, physical games isn't in the cards for us and plus we're using a computer which always which requires internet anyways so to be honest PC is mostly digital gaming which is fine by me because at least we have emulation so that exists <laughs> but when it comes to physical games on console, that's a bit of a stretch just because some games require the internet. Some games, um, they only give you like a digital code in there. Maybe, maybe if it's like a triple pack game, okay? I think, what is it, the Arkham games remastered or whatever on the Switch. I think the only thing on the cartridge is Batman Arkham Asylum, while Arkham City and Arkham Knight, you had to require the internet to download those games and install them, which to me is fucking lame, but it is what it is. But to me, this is important. I don't know. Just the idea of everything be like a form of art, whether the art is good or bad, it doesn't matter, right? It's just scary that these corporations can just take it away from us and it will be lost to time or become lost media depending on um, what it is, I guess. And some of the movies or TV shows that I have right here, Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad Volume 1, is discontinued. It, it, it goes for a really high price in the aftermarket, like 200 to 300 bucks. This Volume 1, you can't get it anymore. Which is crazy. But Volume 2 you can still get for a cheaper price. And sure, someone on YouTube probably uploaded the full series for free for everyone to watch. But you'll never know when that YouTube channel decides to be gone. If the YouTuber deletes their own channel. Or maybe YouTube deleted their channel. We have no idea. So, it is important to have physical media, and streaming services, the quality is not stable, you know, when it comes to streaming services, because it does require the internet. It doesn't matter how good of an internet you have, it doesn't matter how good of a router or modem or setup that you have, it will fluctuate in quality. And the quality will not, will never be stable like getting a physical media, popping, getting the disc, popping in, you know, into a Blu-ray player, and you will watch it without interruptions or any buffering or and it, it will be in a stable quality so there's that i don't know maybe it's just me maybe i'm just being incoherent in my rambling yapping <laughs> uh i don't know no idea but yeah i just wanted to give my thoughts on it i just wanted to upload a video and have a first video for the year. Sorry if everything is disjointed or disorganized and if it ended up being a long video. Sorry. <laughs> Had no idea. But yeah. Uh, and I'll see you guys next time.